Hello everyone, hope you all are well. Today I will going to discuss about synchronous motor drives which is very important topic for electric drives and also for electrical engineering. So myself Mr. Santanu Noskar, Assistant Professor of Electrical Department GKC MGIS Group and my mail id is santanu.uit at the rate of gmail.com and santanu.noskar underscore gkcm at the rate of jisgroup.org and this is my Facebook page Being Electrify with Santanu. You can get all the lecture in my Facebook page and also in my YouTube channel. So let us discuss about your syllabus. So course name is Electric Drives. Course code double is 701 and credit point 4. And this is your contact hour, 3 hours lecture per week, 1 hour tutorial per week. So about this content, I have already covered the basic of electric drives, motor power rating, starting of electric drives. Uh, breaking of electric drives, DC motor drives, induction motor drives and today I will going to discuss about synchronous motor drives. After this I will discuss about industrial application then your syllabus will cover. Okay. So before starting this I want to share with you something that, that was said by famous saint, Indian saint Swami Vivekananda that the greatest religion is to be true to your own nature have been faith in yourself always start what is synchronous motor drives so as the name suggests the synchronous motor rotates at synchronous speed the main advantage of synchronous motor are that they are run on three phase ac supply and dc supply is given to the rotor when the run on synchronous speed the loss is very minimal we can say that if the synchronous motor are designed to run only at rated synchronous speed then what is the use of introducing drives to them the answer is pretty simple synchronous motor drives make the starting pulling and braking process smooth and without any problem so we will discuss about them one by one so what is synchronous speed synchronous speed means ns ns equals to 120 m by p ns is in rpm f for frequency p for number of poles so let us discuss about starting of synchronous motor drive so the problem with synchronous motor are that they are not self-starting before discussing the starting method of this motor we should know about the type of supply and the rotor and stator of the motor briefly the stator of the synchronous motor are similar to that of an induction motor but the only difference lies in the rotor the rotor of the synchronous motor are given DC supply. Now before knowing how the synchronous motor are started, we should know why they are not self-started. The answer can be given as when three-phase supply is given to the uh, stator, there is a rotating magnetic flux which rotates at synchronous speed and if the rotor is also given DC supply, rotor acts as a magnetic flux which rotate at synchronous speed. And if the rotor is also given DC supply, rotor acts as a magnet having two salient poles. So as the rotary standstill position, it cannot follow the magnetic field which is rotating at synchronous speed. The rotor stacks at its position because the opposition poles move so the rapidly that the rotor locks. This is the reason why synchronous motor are not self-starting. Now coming to the point how synchronous motor are started. At first the synchronous motor are started as a normal induction motor. The rotor of the motor is not given DC supply. When the motor reaches the rotor and pull in take place which is discussed later. Pull in process. So another method of starting the synchronous motor is by external motor. In this method, the rotor of the synchronous motor is rotated by an external motor and when the speed of the rotor reaches near synchronous speed, the DC field is switched on and pull in take place. In this method, the starting torque is very low and it is not very popular method also. So let us discuss about pull in of synchronous motor. When the rotor of the synchronous motor reaches near synchronous speed, then the DC field supply is switched on and the pull-in process begins. As during switching on the DC supply due to the phase angle and torque angle, there are various disturbances seen in the motor and 
there are several slip or poles of air gap plugs is also seen. As the pull-in process is completed, the rotor acquires synchronous speed. The complete pull-in as fast as possible. The DC supply should be switched on at the most favorable angle. Like when the synchronous motor is running as induction motor, the DC supply should be fed when the induction motor is at top speed. This will be the best moment because the speed difference will be at least at that point of time. Now we will discuss about the braking of synchronous motor. As we know there are three types of braking which I have already discussed that regenerative braking, dynamic braking and plugging type braking. But for synchronous motor drives only dynamic braking can be applied though plugging can be applied theoretically and regenerative braking cannot be applied to them as they need higher speed than synchronous speed. Dynamic braking is done by disconnecting the motor from supply and connecting it across a three phase register. At the time the motor works as a synchronous generator and energy is dissipated at the register. Plugging is not used for synchronous motor as high plugging current can cause disturbance and damage in life. Now we will discuss the control method first variable frequency control. So a drive operating in true variable frequency control of multiple synchronous motor is shown in this figure where frequency command F star is applied to voltage source inverter through a delay circuit so that rotor speed is able to track the change in frequency. A flux control block changes the stator voltage with frequency to maintain a constant flux below rated speed and a constant terminal voltage above rated speed. This scheme is commonly used for control of multiple synchronous reluctance or permanent magnet motors in fiber spinning, textile and paper mills where accurate speed tracking between the motor is required. <coughs> now what is variable frequency control? So synchronous speed is directly proportional to frequency. Motor speed can be controlled by varying the frequency as in case of induction motor constant flux operation below base speed is achieved by operating the motor with a constant V by F ratio which is increased at low speed to compensate for the stator resistance drop. So for all types of synchronous motor this gives operation with a constant pull out torque rated voltage reaches at the base speed for higher speed the machine is operated at a rated terminal voltage and variable frequency control of multiple synchronous motor and the pull out torque decrease with an increase in frequency. Now there are two modes of variable frequency control. So one is true synchronous mode to number two is self control mode also known as self synchronous mode. Okay, so in true synchronous mode, the stator supply frequency is controlled from an independent oscillator frequency from its initial to the desired value is changed gradually so that the difference between synchronous speed and rotor speed is always small. This allows rotor speed to track the change in synchronous speed. When the desired synchronous speed or frequency is reached, the rotor pulls into step after hunting oscillation variable frequency control of multiple synchronous motor can not only allow the speed control it can also be used for smooth starting and regenerative braking as long as it is ensured that the change in frequency are so slow enough for rotor to track change in synchronous speed a motor with damper winding is used for full into synchronous in self-control mode, the stator supply frequency is changed so the synchronous speed is the same as rotor speed. This ensures that rotor runs at synchronous speed for all operating point. Consequently, rotor cannot pull out of step and hunting oscillation are eliminated. For such application, the rotor motor may not require a damper winding. In self-control mode, the stator supply frequency is changed 
in proportion to the rotor speed so that the rotating field produced by the stator always moves at the same speed as the rotor or rotor field. Since the voltage induced in the stator phase has a frequency proportional to the rotor speed, self-control can be realized by making the stator supply frequency to track the frequency of induced voltage. Alternatively, sensor can be mounted on the stator to track the rotor position. The sensor are called rotor position sensor. The frequency of signals generated by the sensor is proportional to the rotor speed. Hence, the status supply frequency can be made to track the frequency of this signal. Now, let us discuss about self-controlled synchronous motor drives. Listen carefully. A self-controlled synchronous motor drives employing a load cumulated thyristor inverter which is shown in this figure. In large power drives, wound field synchronous motor is used. Medium power drives also employ permanent magnet synchronous motor. The drive employs two converter, which are termed here as source side converter and load side converter. The source side converter is a six pulse line cumulated thyristor converter for a firing angle range zero. Uh, alpha is uh, less than equals to zero. Get, uh, greater than equals to 0 less than equals to 90 it works as a line comm commutated fully controlled rectifier delivering positive vds and positive id look here and for the range of firing angle alpha is greater than equals to 90 and less than equals to 180 degree it worked as a line commutated inverter commutated inverter delivering negative VDAs and positive IDs. So when self-controlled synchronous motor drives operate at a leading power factor, thyristor of the load side converter can be commutated by the motor induced voltage in the same way as thyristor of a line commutated converter are commutated by line voltage commutation of thyristor by induced voltage of load. Here load is a motor is known as load commutation. Now firing angle is measured by comparison of induced voltage in the same way as by the comparison of line voltage is in line a commutated converter. Converter operate as an inverter producing negative VDL and carrying positive ID for alpha 1 greater than equals to 90 less than equals to 180 for alpha 1 greater than equals to 0 and less than equals to 90. It works as a rectifier giving positive VDL for alpha A is greater than equals to 0 less than equals to 90 and alpha 1 greater than equals to 90 less than equals to 180 and with VDS greater than VDL the source side converter worked as a rectifier and load side converter as an inverter causing power to flow from AC source to the motor thus giving motoring operation when firing angles are changed such that alpha is greater than equals to 90 less than equals to 180 degree and alpha 1 greater than equals to 0 degree and less than equals to 90 degree the load side converter operates as a rectifier and the source side converter as an inverter. Consequently, the power flow reverse and machine operate in regenerative braking. The magnitude of torque depends on VDS to VDL. Speed can be changed by control of line side converter firing angles. When working as an inverter, the firing angle has to be less than 180 degree to take care of commutation overlap and turn off thyristor. It is common to define the commutation lead angle for load side converter as beta 1 equals to 180 degree minus alpha 1. If commutation overlap is ignored, the input AC current of the converter will lag behind input AC voltage by an angle alpha 1. Since the motor input current has an opposite phase to converter input current, the motor current will lead the terminal voltage by an angle beta 1. Therefore, the motor operate at leading power factor. Now, the lower value of beta 1, higher the motor power factor and lower the inverter rating. 
the commutation overlap for the load side converter depends on the subtransient inductance of the motor the motor is provided with the damper winding in order to reduce subtransient inductance this allows operation with the substantially low value of b1 beta 1 the damper winding does not play its conventional roles for starting the machine as an induction motor and to damps oscillation because rotor and rotating field speed are always the same as explained it is simply control scheme the drive is operated at a fixed value of commutation lead angle blc for the load side converter working as an inverter and b beta 1 beta 1 equals to 180 degree alpha 1 equals to 0 degree so when as a rectifier when good power factor is required to minimize converter rating, the load side converter when working as an inverter is operated with constant margin angle control if commutation overlap of the thyristor under commutation is denoted by U. Then the duration of which the thyristor under commutation is subjected to reverse bias after current through it has fallen to zero is given by gamma equals to b1 minus u this also uh, we can say bl so for successful commutation of thyristor gamma greater than omega t uh, tq where tq is the turn of time of thyristor and omega the uh, frequency of motor voltage in radian per second since u is proportional to id for a given id bit 1 can be calculated such the thyristor under commutation is reverse biased for a duration y min which is just enough for its commutation this in turn minimize beta 1 and maximize the motor power factor since gamma is kept constant at its minimum value y min a uh, gamma min uh, the control scheme is called constant margin angle control. The DC link inductor LD reduces the ripple in the DC link current ID and prevents the two converter from interfering with each other operation. Because of the presence of induction inductor in the DC link, the load side converter when working as an inverter behave essentially as a current source inverter expect that thyristor commutation is now performed by motor induced voltage consequently the motor phase current has six step away from because of the dc current through ld the ac input current of source side converter also has six step from the dc line converter id flows through the machine phase for 120 degree in each half cycle fundamental component of motor phase current is has following relationship with id which is i is equals to root 6 by pi into i so for a machine operating in a, in the self control mode rotating field speed should be the same as rotor speed this condition is realized by making frequency of the load side converter output voltage equals to the frequency of voltage induced in the armature firing pulse are therefore generated either by comparison of motor terminal voltage as induced voltage are not directly accessible or by rotor position sensor self control is ensured when firing pulse are generated by the comparison of motor terminal voltage as induced voltage are not directly accessible alternatively firing pulse are generated by rotor position sensor which are stationary and suitably aligned with the armature winding the frequency of induced voltage depends on the speed of the rotor or rotor field and their phase depends on the location of the rotor poles with respect to the armature winding hence signal generated by rotor position sensor have the same frequency as that of the induced voltage and they have a defined definite phase with respect to induced voltage load side converter thyristor are fired in the sequence of their number with 60 degree interval therefore for the control of load side converter thyristor in all six rotor angular position are required to be detected per cycle of the induced voltage the hall effect sensor can be detected the magnitude and direction of the magnitude field hence three hall effect sensor can detect the six rotor position the sensor are mounted at 60 degree elliptical interval and aligned suitably with armature winding and started earlier load side converter and the current source inverter 
perform essentially the same function the only difference between the two is that while the former use the load commutation the latter use the force commutation so load side commutation has number of advantage over force commutation that it does not require commutation circuit and frequency of operation can be higher and it can operate at power level beyond the capability of force commutation now load side com uh, converter performs somewhat similar function as commutator in the DC machine the load side converter and the self control synchronous motor drive combination function similar to a DC machine first it is fed from a DC supply and secondly like a DC machine the stator and rotor field remain stationary with respect to each other all speed consequently drive consisting of load side converter and synchronous motor is known as commutator less DC motor so at low speed motor induce emf will be insufficient to accumulate the thyristor load converter therefore at start the for speed 10 percent of base speed the commutation of the load side converter thyristor is done by forcing the current through conducting thyristor to zero this is realized by making source side converter to work as inverter each time load side converter thyristor are to be turned off for example, thyristor T1 and T2 are to conduct together for 60 degree electrical. After 60 degree source side converter will be made to work as an inverter which will reverse VDS and turn off thyristor T1 and T2. Now the source side converter operation is brought back to rectification and gate faults are related to T2 and T3 to turn them on and make them conduct together for next 60 degree electrical. Since frequency of operation of load side converter the at low motor speed is very low compared to source frequency such an operation can be realized this operation of the inverter can be termed as pulse mode this mode of operation requires rotor position sensor therefore even when the normal operation above 10 percent of base speed is implemented by sensing motor terminal voltage rotor position sensor will be needed to realize pulse mode the DC supply to the field can be provided from a control rectifier through slip ring and brushes. Alternatively, brushless excitation system consisting of diode bridge mounted on the rotor and therefore rotating with the rotor and supplied by the rotating transformer can be used. The current is controlled by controlling the input voltage of the transformer by feeding it from an AC voltage regulator. The brushless excitation eliminates slip ring and brushes and associated maintenance. Now here we will discuss about a closed loop speed control. So a closed loop speed control scheme is shown in this figure. It employs outer speed control loop and inner current control loop with uh, limiter like DC motor. The terminal voltage center generates reference pulse of the same frequency as the machine induced voltage. The Phase delay circuit shift the reference pulse suitably to obtain control at a constant commutation lead angle VLC depending on the sign of speed error. VLC is set to provide motoring or braking operation. Speed omega m can be sensed either from the terminal voltage sensor or from a separate tachometer. An increase in reference speed omega m produce a positive speed error. Now PLC value is set for motoring operation the speed controller and current limiter set the DC link current reference at the maximum permissible value. The machine accelerates fast when close to the desired speed the current limiter desaturates and the drive settles at the desired speed and at the DC link current with valence motor and load torque. Similarly, a reduction in reference speed produces a negative speed error. This said VLC for regenerative braking operation and the motor deaccelerates with speed error change sign VLC. Value is set for motoring operation and the drive settles at desired speed. High efficiency four quadrant operation with regenerative braking, high power rating up to 100 uh, um, megawatt and ability to run at high speed 6000 rpm are some important advantage for of this drive some prominent application are high speed and high power drives for compressor blower fans pumps conveyor steel running mills mainline transaction ship population and aircraft test facilities so at a very 
high power level harmonic generate at source and motor terminal requires special attention the single line diagram of high power drive is shown in this figure the source side harmonic are reduced by using a 12 pulse converter for this two six pulse converter are connected in series the supply of the converter is obtained through a transformer with primary connected in star and having two secondary winding one connected in star feeds one six pulse converter and another connected in delta feeds another six pulse converter this way 30% phase shift is provided between the input voltage of two six pulse converter the input current wave from each two converter and source inverter are shown in this figure the source current is more close to sinusoidal compared to six pulse converter the harmonic is in motor current produced torque pulsation and losses in rotor and damper winding due to induced harmonic current this effect are minimized by using a self control synchronous motor drive equipped with a two three phase winding on stator with a phase shift of 30 degree between their axis and feeding them from two series connected six pulse load commutated converter with their output current phase shifted by 30 degree the resultant stator mmm has 12 pulse wave pump therefore the torque population and rotor and damper winding losses are reduced when the motor has only single winding it can be supplied with 12 pulse current by connecting the series connected six pulse converter with the motor via transformer in the same way as mentioned above source side converter now we will discuss about self-control synchronous motor drives employing a cyclo converter which is shown in this figure so firing poles are generated either by comparison of the motor terminal voltage or by rotor position sensor as in case of track the cyclo converter control has the advantages of smooth low speed operation four quadrant operation with regenerative braking and good dynamic response but it has low speed range and because it uses large number of thyristor it becomes economically acceptable only when the drive rating is high synchronous motor without the damper winding is used because the damper winding reduces the inductance of the machine and therefore its ability to filter out harmonic in the output voltage of cyclo converter since the drives operates in self control mode the damper winding is not needed for its convention rules so the drive is employed is low speed TLDS driving of ball mills in cement plants, mine host, reversing rolling mills requiring fast dynamic response and in ships equipped with diesel generator fed self control synchronous motor drives employing a cyclo converter. So these drives have power rating in the megawatts range at such high power levels considerable saving in cyclo converter cost is obtained by operating the motor at unity power factor by adjusting the field current now a typical rating of synchronous motor for a ball mill is cement in cement plant is 8750 horsepower unity power factor 14.5 rpm 4.84 hertz 1900 volt and 40 volts a cyclo converter is ideally suitable for such a low frequency supply earlier gears were employed to get low speed operation absence of gear in this drive reduce the cost of maintenance requirement because of similarly with an ac commutator motor the drive is also known as ac commutator less motor let us discuss about voltage source inverter phase synchronous motor drive an inverter phase synchronous motor has been very popular as a converter motor in which the synchronous motor is fed from a current source inverter having load commutation of late more attention is being paid towards understanding the behavior of a synchronous motor fed from a voltage source inverter this drive can also be developed to have self-control using rotor position sensor or phase control method it has been reported in the literature that this drive might impose fewer problem both on machine as well as on the system design a normal vs1 with 180 degree conduction of thyristor required force commutation and load commutation is not possible a typical power circuit of voltage source inverter is shown in this figure okay these two figure three combination are possible 
to provide variable voltage variable frequency supply to a synchronous motor this is the three combination one two three the voltage control can be obtained <coughs> external to the inverter using a phase control rectifier the link voltage is variable this has the disadvantage that commutation is difficult at very low speed as the output voltage is a square wave the inverter is called variable voltage inverter or square wave inverter the second alternative is to have voltage control is the inverter itself okay using principle of pwm or psm the inverter is fed from a constant link voltage a diode rectifier would be sufficient on the line side this does not have difficulties of commutation at low speed. Very low speed up to zero can be obtained. The third alternative is to interpose a DC chopper in between the rectifier and the inverter. Look here. The system may appear cumbersome at first sight, but it has advantages, some, some advantages three simple converter are used to give the desired result look here it is possible to reduce the size of link inductance by having a synchronous control of the chopper a voltage source inverter feeding a synchronous motor can have either separate control or self control in the former the speed of the motor is determined by external frequency from crystal oscillator open loop control is possible the motor has instability problems and hunting similar to the conventional motor. In the latter, the inverter is controlled by means of firing pulse obtained from a rotor position sensor or induced voltage sensor. The motor is in CLM mode and has better stability characteristics which is shown in this four picture. Let us discuss about these four pictures. The picture shown here is principle of separate and self control of voltage source in butter fed synchronous motor drive. So number A is the separate control of synchronous motor fed from square wave inverter. B is square control of synchronous motor fed from PWM inverter. Okay, this is B, this is A, this C is self control of synchronous motor fed from square wave inverter and D is self control of synchronous motor fed from PWM inverter okay so the output voltage of the inverter is non sinusoidal the behavior of the motor supplied from the inverter is entirely different from the behavior of the motor operating on a conventional sinusoidal supply a knowledge of the behavior is essential the steady state performance enables one to have a proper choice of the thyristor and also to determine the effect of non sinusoidal wave from on the torque develop and machine losses the stator current drawn by the motor when the fed from the square of inverter has sharp peaks and is rich in harmonic content this harmonic can cause additional losses and heating of the motor they also cause pulsating torque which are objectionable at low speed thus the performance with respect to additional heating due to harmony and pulsating torque is similar to that of an induction motor so when a pw inverter is used this harmonic effect are reduced the stator current are less picky and have reduced harmonic content accordingly additional losses due to harmonic consequent motor heating and torque pulsation are decreased this effect become minimal this discussion on regeneration given for induction motor holds good for these cases also with the square of inverter another phase control rectifier is required on the line side mm -hmm. dynamic braking can be employed when pw inverter used two cases may arise the inverter may fade from a constant dc source with case of regeneration in straight forward the dc supply to the inverter may be obtained from a diode rectifier in this case an additional phase control converter is required on the line side a square of inverter drive must have a phase control converter on the line side. Due to phase control, the line power factor is very poor. A diode rectifier is sufficient in case of PW inverter. The line of PL input unit in either case, the machine power factor can be improved by field control with a view to minimizing the inverter size as well as losses in this inverter and motor. It is advantageous to operate the motor at UPF. Unity power factor. 
A PSI drive provides reasonably good efficiency, converter cost is high and in see, motor operation is possible. Open loop separate control may pose stably problems at low speeds. CLM mode is very stable, PWM drive has a better dynamic response and than a square wave drive. This find application as general purpose industrial drives for low and medium power. Now let us discuss about microprocessor control of a current source inverter fed synchronous motor. So a drive system employing a current source inverter fed synchronous motor has the following features. Number one is a four quadrant drive can be accomplished very easily. Number two, a self control which synchronize the gating pass of the inverter with rotor position provide an improved steady state and dynamic performance. Number three, the natural computation using machine voltage is possible in a speed ranging from 10% base speed. At starting a low speed force commutation is required, which may be provided by additional commutation circuit of the inverter or by interrupting the ceiling current. So here are a typical block diagram implementation of a microprocessor for the control of current source inverter fit synchronous motor is shown in those two figures. Okay. One is block diagram of microprocessor based synchronous motor control. Another is microprocessor based control system of CSI pair self control synchronous motor. So the system of a DC link converter which is made up of two six pulse which converts interacted by a high smoothing inductance. The DC link inverter feeds a synchronous motor whose field may be controlled by a chopper for a phase control rectifier. In the normal operation, the line side converter operates as a rectifier and the machine side one as an inverter. The control pulse to the rectifier are provided by the microprocessor with proper interface between the AC lines and microprocessor the provide to provide the proper interrupt signal to synchronize the firing pulse with the frequency and to vary the firing angle with respect to the natural firing instant the current source inverter pit synchronous motor is fitted with a shaft encoder this is an aluminium disc look here in this picture this picture with slots on the periphery mounted on the shaft so a combination of photo transistor and light emitting diode aligned across the slot provides the necessary train of pulses. These pulses are processed to obtain the rotor position as well as the speed. The force commutation is available during starting until the machine accelerates to speed when natural commutation can take over. The stator and field current are also sensed and converted to digital form before they are fed to the microprocessor for further processing. So the function of the microprocessor are now obvious and can be listed as under number one. Just I am summarizing the microprocessor control of a current source inverter pit synchronous motor. So number one, the microprocessor should perform the main function of monitoring and control the system variable to obtain the desired performance. Number two, it must be supported by proper software to ensure the necessary commutation of the inverter at low speed where the machine voltage are not number three it received the data concerning the system variable stator and field current and process them to issue the desired control signal to the rectifier and inverter to achieve the desired performance at all operating condition number four the link current control is obtained by controlling the firing angle of the line side the firing angle control with the proper synchronization with line voltage with respect to the natural firing instant may be obtained by implementing the method described above with the control of a dual converter okay and number five the microprocessor received the information regarding the rotor position and process it to control the firing of the inverter and number six it must be software supported and have necessary hardware to accomplish the feedback configuration and the control it must be performed the generation of necessary feedback signal and necessary controllers limiter and function uh, generators using loop up levels the controller must be software oriented so that they can be readily modified so it is process the information from the rotor position sensor to determine speed which is one of the feedback signal. 
This is all the microprocessor control of the current source inverter fed synchronous motor drive. Now let us discuss about some reference books. Uh, some test book is uh, number one fundamental of electrical drives by GK Dubey new age international publication number two electric drives Vedam Subramanium Tata McRoyal publication and number three a fast course on electric drives by SK Pillai new age international publication and some reference book are electric uh, motor drives by R. Krishnan number two modern power electrons and AC drives by BK Bose number three electric motor and drives by Austin Huge so thank you hope you all enjoy my lecture this is too large and too complex also because electrical drives is a little bit complex subject to know electrical drives we have to know the electrical machine very perfectly so if you have any query please comment in my comment box i will definitely reply to your comment and if you have any question about electrical engineering please mail to my mail id i will definitely reply to your mail so please sub like share and comment and subscribe my channel Stay safe and stay happy. Thank you.